Hey, it's Paul, a few spirits. It's been a little while since we talked with you, my friend. How you doing? Uh, doing good, Tom. Glad to be back. Good. Yeah, it's great to have you. And you're watching Bourbon Blog. And I know there's a lot of Alice in Chains fans just like me out there. And the, yes, continue to continue to keep rocking this one. This is your third year to be doing uh, the few spirits. Um, Alice in Chains. This is delicious, Paul. I like this. Yeah, it's great whiskey. It's a great band. And um, I sure hope that we've done the band and the music justice with the whiskey. I mean, certainly as a fan personally, you, know, you always want to make sure that you're living up to the you know amazing standards of the band. And, you know, I hope we did. I think we did. But uh, you know, that's always going to be in the eye of the beholder, really. Well, absolutely. And here is the eye. Here is the eye of the beholder, the famous eye there in the mouth. And uh, is there a name for the eye in the mouth? I'm forgetting. Is there a... It should be, but no, it's just it's just a really cool looking artwork. It feels like maybe this mouth is uh, is about to have some of the whiskey. I know mine is. Uh, when you first started brainstorming uh, about a way to honor the band Bourbon, how, how did you come up with tequila? How did that happen? Well, I mean, you know, as a fan of the band, you know, you kind of look at it and it's musical and it's lyrical. And there's, you know, obviously there's amazing melodies, but you've also got this. Well, I, I apologize for using the word, but they've got this grunge. Yeah. Um, I mean, terrible word. You go know, grunge band. You know, again, I'm not trying to state the obvious, uh, but you've got that, you know, that awesome kind of you know, drop D tuning. That's just so heavy and thick and right. rich, but you've also got these big, sweet melodies on top. And so, you know, trying to replicate that kind of a concept, mm. you know, in a whiskey, you know, you know, what's big and thick and rich and sweet and heavy and is not whiskey. I'm like, well, that, Sounds like tequila to me. <laughs> tequila, yeah. rock and roll. It's heavy, um, and so yeah, you kind of ran the idea by the band and management. And they're like, "Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds heavy." Um, and so, you know, we did it. You know, certainly we're not the first to do a tequila finished bourbon or anything like that. Right. Um, but it's delicious. And at the end of the day, it's what you know. What's in your Glencairn that matters. That's right. And delicious whiskey that's that's what you want right and so we've got something i think is there it's big it's rich it's heavy it's sweet um but it's also got that hmm, you know we bottle it at uh 101 proof uh which to me is just the ultimate rock and roll proof yes um feel free to disagree with me and that's great but to me 101 is rock and roll it is um, and I love it. I, I think that it, there's a lot that's happened here. There's that sweet layer you mentioned, Paul. There's a nice creaminess. It's well balanced. And I, yeah, I've, I mean, I've seen a, a few brands play with um, tequila finishes. I would say it's one of the ones I've seen, you know, less of. Uh, and I think you've, you've done it really well here. Um, how long does it, how long is it finishing? What's the, what's it like? Talk about what, what you, what you're noticing on the tequila finish as opposed to other finishes, maybe. You know, I think like what what I think makes it cool here is that it's not just this big blast of tequila. Um, it is subtle. Yeah, you've got the heaviness. Yeah, you've got the sweetness, but it's not bludging you over the head. It's really, again, I think there's balance. It is whiskey first and foremost. It's not tequila. It is whiskey first and foremost. Um, yes, you've got tequila flavors, but it's not tequila. Right. Um, and so I think that's kind of where it's, you know, it really kind of stands out. You know, it's delicious whiskey. It looks awesome on your shelf, obviously. I mean, the label is awesome. Uh, he works with an artist called, uh, this guy, Justin Helton. Uh, yes. goes, uh, goes by status serigraph on the internet. Right. And he just does awesome rock and roll work. You know, we've worked with him before for our flaming lips bottle, Yeah, but yeah, you know, how many times have you seen a bottle of bourbon that looks like that with all those colors and bright and you got the little foil die cuts in there and it's shiny and it's cool. It's really good. It's really good stuff. And it's beautiful and it's fairly limited. You're doing it every year, but it's fairly limited edition, right? Yeah, I mean, we, we don't put out that much. Um, at the moment, we actually were just talking about it earlier today. Um, you were trying to figure out some good ways to kind of keep it going. Um, fundamentally people want it. It's delicious whiskey. And, you know, what we see is people buy one, they try it, they like it, they buy another one. 
they buy one for their friends and then their friends buy one and their friends buy it for other friends. And so it's, it's kind of funny. You can watch the people coming back and forth and you can just watch people really falling in love with it. And um, yeah, we're, you know, we're trying to keep it going. You know, we're still a small distillery, so we can't necessarily produce all the whiskey we want. You know, we're not, it's not going to hit widespread distribution. Right. Um, it's just not. So it's primarily available at our website, you know, fewspirits.com. Uh, that links directly to our retail partner, and they can ship to 30-something states. They can't ship everywhere, so if you're in the wrong state, that's you know, on, uh, it's, it's state law. They'd ship everywhere if they could, but your state law stops them from doing it. Uh, <laughs> not yours, Tom, because you can ship it in Kentucky. Um, but my state law does. Like We can't ship it into Illinois. Um, so in Illinois, you can get it at places like Binnie's and some other places. But you know we're you know we're trying to figure out ways that we can get a little bit more distribution. But at the moment, your best bet's going to be just looking at the uh, retailer linked at fewspirits.com. Yes, and so there's uh, and again you're in you're in all the states now with with your spirits. We love seeing you. I was actually I was just mentioning someone. I was in San Diego this past week. I saw you, of course, on many of the great lists like Arrow Club. You know, oh, going so far. What's that? Aero Club is so oh, it's cool. so wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it's such an awesome spot. I like I like watching the little flippy guys go back and forth. It's like oh, that's yeah. So cool. <laughs> I noticed they had several of yours, and I was happy to see that. You know, I'm always excited when I see some of my very favorite craft spirits on these lists, uh, yep. where they say we want to encompass, you know, a thousand plus whiskeys. Well, let's make sure we include the very best. Yep. Uh, and you you continue to grow. What what what? You're looking back at twelve, little over twelve years. Mm -hmm. um, What's it been like for you, this this ride from where you started to what you're noticing now in the world of spirits? Oh, it's wild, man. I mean, you know, 12 years ago when we got our start, like grain to glass whiskey didn't really exist outside of the legacy distillers in Kentucky. It just really didn't. Um, like, you know, I'm being like a little bit glib. I mean, obviously there were distilleries here before us that were making grain to glass whiskey. You know, talking about, you know, Corsair and St. George. Um, obviously the legacy guys, right. Uh, you know, we weren't like the first or anything like that, but we were super early. There's, there's maybe 25, 30 guys in the country, you know, making grain to glass whiskey when we started. Right. Um, and when we started, you know, craft spirits as a whole was less than half a percent of spirit sales in the country. Um, craft spirits is now over 5% of spirit sales in the country. Mm -hmm. There's 2,800 distilleries running around there, you know, over a thousand people making whiskey from scratch. So, I mean, it's really a golden time to be a spirits consumer that, you know, you're, it's an embarrassment of choice, like no matter what you like, and hopefully you like few, uh, but if you don't, there's a brand out there that's making something that you will like. And that's, that's awesome. So it started less than a half when you started less than a half a percent of what what Americans were consuming. Now it's at, at around five percent. That's a big, big uh, jump. Well, in it's six and a half, but it's over. Six five. And a half. That's I mean, a big it, jump in this, you know, relatively short time. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And again, what that means is that people are coming into spirits, which is great. Yeah, you know, you've got spirits are awesome. <laughs> What do you what do you see for the future? I mean, I and I'm often asked this too. I mean, lots of growth, obviously, the last five, 10 years. Looking forward 10 years, how many more distilleries do you think we'll we'll see in the US? Yeah, I think you'll see more distilleries, but I think fundamentally at this point, it's you know, the business is gonna be a little bit different that you know, you know, you just look at breweries, right? You know, breweries right. thrive and survive when their market share grows faster than the number of competitors. And the second the number of competitors grows faster than the market, uh, they're all kind of hurting. And wow. so, you know, do we, you know, will we have many more distilleries than this? Uh, honestly, probably not. Um, some that are here today won't be here in 10 years. Some that aren't here today will be here in 10 years. But, you know, fundamentally what I think you're going to continue to see is just a continued growth in quality, creativity, artistry. Uh, across all you know, across all spirits, but especially whiskey. Yes, hope, uh, we we hope to, just to see more and more great ones, and I know we will. And we love everything you're doing, from your your single malt to your rye to your bourbon. You have the uh, these wonderful um, 
other products I've, I've been lucky enough to taste with you before the immortal rye a little bit of tea the cold cut um bourbon with the coffee and i mean they're very very creative spirits that you've come up with you've you've pushed the envelope and you continue to uh have some wonderful standard offer offerings but also some very creative offerings too yeah, um, we, love, like, we love to play with flavor like it's yeah. creating new things it's the, it's the stuff that's cool and you know is everybody out there going to like the cold cut bourbon proofed with cold brew coffee? Hmm, frankly, no. That's okay. We don't need everybody to like it. We just need a few to like it. And, you know, it's, you know, we want to push out there. We want to bring people into spirits by making it not stuffy. We want to, you know, this stuff is supposed to be fun. And, oh, yeah. you know, not everybody has fun the exact same way everybody else does. You know, some people have fun just, you know, tasting really cool stuff. Other people want to talk about, you know, the mash bills and the yeast. And, you know, people have fun doing that. And it, it, it's all great. But, you know, I think that for few to continue to win, we need to be bringing people into spirits and making it not scary. Like, come on in, man. The water's fine. Like, we're just, we're drinking some spirits. We're having a good time. We're bringing people together. You know, we're sharing good times with their friends and family. We're commiserating bad times with their friends and family. <laughs> and you know, that's, to me, that's what I think all this business is about is those times that you share with your friends and family. It really and, is. And having, you know, having a good time when you can and commiserating the bad when you must. Bringing uh, people together. That's what uh, bourbons, whiskeys, great spirits are all about. You've done it so well. Uh, hopefully I'm sure a lot of Alice and Chains fans uh, and those that just to know a little bit about Allison Change and just love what you do, uh, are going to be getting a bottle of this and the link to get it on and to learn about all you're doing is fewspirits.com. You have some other releases coming up um, that you were uh, you were telling me about that are going to be in Europe that you're expanding, some of the limited editions. Yeah, I mean, so we love, uh, you know, we love working with uh, rock bands because yeah. Yeah, I'm a frustrated musician. Um, and so... Uh, I, just, I think it's great fun to work with musicians. And so we we do. Uh, Alice in Chains, we also worked with another one of my favorite bands. It's called uh, Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Yeah. Uh, super cool three piece band. They do awesome stuff. Uh, and we work with them. Uh, we did the whiskey development during uh, lockdown, which was very, very difficult. Um, but then we released the whiskey. It was really killer whiskey. And, you know, we heard very vocal fans. <laughs> Uh, out of Europe, who were very, very upset that they couldn't get a bottle of it. So we did another release of it, and it's going straight to Europe. Um, should be out next spring. Um, really fun product. It's a vatting of Few Spirits bourbon uh, finished in rum barrels, Few Spirits bourbon finished in vermouth barrels, and then a uh, mesquite smoked wheat whiskey. And so the concept with the BRMC release was to try to replicate the feeling of riding a motorcycle through the South, going by a barbecue joint. And, you know, that all kind of came out of, you know, the band tours pretty incessantly because that's what you have to do if you're a band. Uh, and when they're on the tour bus, you know, they drink whiskey, but they don't call it whiskey. They call it motor oil. Hey, pass me a shot of that motor oil. Can I get a snort of that motor oil? <laughs> and so, you know, we started off with, all right, well, Let's make a whiskey called Motor Oil. And so it's Black Oil Motorcycle Club Motor Oil Whiskey. Uh, but obviously, you just can't put 10 weight 40 in a bottle and, <laughs> and sell that because that's not going to be very tasty. Um, you know, so we're just kind of talking about feelings and emotions and you know their favorite parts of being on the road, which you know, being on the road kind of sucks. Um, but we just kind of came up with this concept of trying to evoke that feeling of being on a bike. Uh, and have that, you know, that little hint of smoke and that little bit of barbecue, but also sweet and bitter and oh, herbaceous nice. and, you know, all these great, great flavors. And we just kind of went, you know, went to the workshop with that and riffed around for a while, sending samples, you know, all over the world. Because uh, Rob, who's the guitar player, was living in uh, Austria at the time with his girlfriend. So you know, were sending the two people who were uh, in Vegas, one guy's in Austria, management's in LA, and we're all getting together on Zoom just like this and sitting sipping whiskey and talking about what we like. So it was, you know, it was a great project. And so we're super excited to bring uh, the uh, BRMC motor oil to Europe 
although it's not called motor oil in Europe because uh, the uh, European regulators wouldn't allow it. So it's just Blackwell Motorcycle Club in Europe. Oh, they won't let you put oil in a bottle. On it. You, yeah, they won't let you put the word oil on a bottle because uh, apparently they think Europeans would find that confusing and might try to uh, um, put it in their engine. Oh, wow. I would hope they would not do. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to be very lubricating. It's, it's a not going to be on the engine. It might be for the rest of the body. but uh, Right. It's a social lubricant, not a mechanical lubricant. Right. So, you know, we won't see whiskey on any of their oil bottles because that would be dangerous as well. That would be dangerous. You start drinking that, that would be terrible. <laughs> so it'll just look for that in uh, in Europe coming in the spring. Um, and, of course, uh, any other any other forthcoming projects you want? I know you're always working on great. Yeah, we're always working on other stuff. we got a couple other rock bands we're working with to release next year, but uh, we're not quite talking about those quite yet. All right. um, it'll be coming out, and I think uh, people will be very, very excited about it when they come out. Super cool whiskey. Um, and, yeah, like fundamentally, that's kind of where we sit. You know, We've got a really cool one coming out uh, that we're calling Smokeworks. It's this easily the smokiest whiskey we've ever released Ooh, nice. uh, so if you it's like gonna smoke, be a single malt or a uh it is not a single malt it is strictly speaking a uh, under ttb guidelines it would be a malt whiskey but it is not a single malt uh because there's a heavy dose of rye grain in it so it's not single malt it's just a malt whiskey because it's not 100 rye or sorry it's not 100 malt um, but that's a really, really fun whiskey that'll be out at some point next year too, for anybody that's a smoke head out there. Uh, I yeah. think you're going to like to find with the, uh, with the few smoke works. Few smoke works coming. Any, uh, any particular, uh, Alice and Chains song you would pair this with as you sip it? Uh, all secrets known. Cause that's what it's, that's what it's named after. That's what the one you'd pair it with. Very, very delicious. Uh, get a bottle of this. If you're a, Fan of just great bourbon, Alice in Chains, and I love just the note. I just think it's a extremely well balanced, uh, just like everything you do. So, um, thank you, my friend. Really, yeah, it's good to see you again. Uh, check out fewspirits.com for this and so much more of what Paul and the gang are doing there in Illinois. Um, and keep, keep it growing, and we'll look forward to uh. Having you back on to try more of your tasty treats soon, my friend. Sounds good, Tom. Be well, my friend. Cheers. Thanks, Paul.